This is Play North, the Manitoba Game Show, episode number five. I'm your host, Bruce Krentz. Joining me today is Todd Harwood. Todd's got a little bit of a huge job coming up with the <laughs> Manitoba Game. So, Todd, you're the sport chair, sort of the head of all the different sports that are coming up here. Tell us, what does that position involve? Uh, so yeah, I sort of kind of serve on the executive, uh, responsible for overseeing most of the sports, the 13 sports, 15 uh, events, uh, look after budget, we talk a little bit about legacies, what the games are going to leave behind afterwards, and yeah, so kind of, and making sure obviously people are in place to run the events, and, and yeah, that sort of stuff. Big job for you, I think, was probably just recruiting all of the volunteers that fall under you. So you're not running 13 sports by yourself, be cool if you did though, <clears throat> you'd be busy. Uh, so you had to recruit uh, sort of sports specific people in each of those events and are we well on our way with that? Yeah, so we're doing really well with our volunteers for the most part. Uh, a lot of the sports that we have, it was kind of a, a natural fit for a lot of the people. We have champions, I'll give you a Sam Antilla is really heavily involved with the Burntwood Curling Club. Curling is an event or a sport in our games and so that was an easy fit. Some of the challenges have been sports like speed skating. We don't really have speed skating in Thompson so we're trying to find that champion who might be a little bit interested in speed skating, doesn't really have to know much about it, they'll work with the, the provincial sport organization and we're actually currently looking for a speed skating chair, so if you're really <laughs> interested, uh, drop me a line. But uh, yeah, so it, things have fallen into place and our sport chairs are just taking it and running with it, doing really, really well. Rod a roll. Uh, the other one that I would guess is tricky, but maybe not wrestling. Do we have a wrestling person? We do, actually. So uh, kind of a cool story, I'm gonna date myself a little bit. I uh, taught at the high school for a long time. We had a really, really, really great wrestling program. One of the students who came through at Artie Parker was a, a, a young lad, now a man named uh, Jared Schnellert. So Jared's taken the role oh, yes, of the yes. uh, wrestling chair, and he is the same thing, just he's kind of recruited some of the guys he went to school with and was in the uh, wrestling program with, so that one's going really, really well. Super, and so some of the sports that we will see here are sports that we don't have in Thompson. Some of them are pretty common. Uh, Manitoba Games now isn't a grassroots event anymore. It's a lead up to bigger and better things, which uh, this is sort of a part of. Why don't you tell us what's going on behind us? Uh, so right now, uh, Badminton Manitoba just is, uh, I don't know if it's a carrot for their athletes, just got them out of the city. This is the uh, Badminton Manitoba high performance team. And so they are here just training for a couple days. Uh, a few of these athletes, uh, I think in a previous episode you may have interviewed, uh, they are former Manitoba Games athletes. Many of these athletes here uh, will be trying out for Canada Games, so that concept of the next next step. A lot of the Manitoba Games sports use the Manitoba Games uh, as that vehicle to train athletes for Canada Games. So you'll see the age categories, uh, they're planning forward. So. Don't hold me to this. I think that the category for badminton is under 15 or under 16 in thinking that those athletes, when the next Canada Games roll out, uh, it'll be that stepping stone. So uh, hockey, I know for sure, is doing the same thing. Uh, curling, same thing. Some of the sports aren't using it, but uh, many of them do use Manitoba Games as that next step. And uh, if you're interested in being one of the athletes in the games, you should check with your provincial sport organization right away because it's not a thing where you can sign up a couple days ahead of time. You probably should be here in the gym <laughs> right yeah. now uh, yeah. or something like that. Speaking of the gym, I mean, uh, why don't you tell us just a little bit about the facilities. I'm, I'm so excited <coughs> about having the games here because we have such an awesome setup, but uh, talk a bit about that. Yeah, Thompson, I think uh, my perception is we're pretty unique in that uh, the large majority of our facilities are kind of housed centrally. So we're obviously at Artie Parker right now. That's going to hold was uh, archery, it's going to have uh, badminton, and then right next door at the VRCC, we've got wrestling, we've got gymnastics, we have the hockey events, we have ringette, we have speed skating, we have figure skating, like... Uh, Curling the whole thing. Yeah, exactly, right? It's going to be all right there. Plus, uh, with UCN being so close, we're hoping that maybe they can uh, share some of their facilities, so things like uh, our results people who are recording the results and getting that out to the world uh, are going to be centrally located right there too. So um, I, what Thompson brings to the table is that central location, and I think the athletes and, and the spectators too that are going to come are going to have the opportunity opportunity to see other sports. So the badminton players, when they're not competing, they can go over, they can check out wrestling, they can check out figure skating, and so, and it's literally right next door, they'll have time to do that. Well, it's phenomenal, and uh, we'll bring someone else on to talk about accommodations, but they're also staying right <coughs> beside here too. It's not like they've got a 20 minute commute to, uh, to get to their events or the other events, so it's, it's gonna be fantastic. As great as our facilities are, we can't host 13 sports and 15 events all at once, so how are we going to manage that? Yeah, so the sports run in two different phases, and you're putting me on the spot a little bit, I don't know which <laughs> sports are which, but uh, definitely, so uh, the events will run, athletes will, and coaches and officials, everyone will show up kind of the Sunday night, uh, March the 4th, uh, they'll compete on the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so essentially three days to get the competitions done. We will pack those kids up, and then that same Wednesday, all the athletes for phase two are going to kind of come in and then they're going to uh, we'll house them 
and then we're going to uh, compete for three days, and then we ship them out again. So it's going to be a, a kind of a crazy week, especially that Wednesday, but uh, we're going to make sure that people have a great time when they're here. It's going to be fantastically fun. Thanks, Todd, for joining me. I know you'll, you'll be still looking for volunteers, so if people really do want to get involved with one of these sports, uh, the, the chairs of those events are always looking for people, and uh, we want to see as many people involved as we can. We didn't ask you to name the 13 sports, but they're all on the website, so uh, we're all over social media at Manitoba Games. Check us out there. Follow our hashtag for sure, hashtag play north. We'll see you all right here March 4th to 10th for the Manitoba Winter Games powered by Manitoba Hydro.